Hello, welcome to Spark here at Resurrection Lutheran Church. I'm Brenda O'Connor, the Director of Children and Family Ministries, and I'm so excited that you joined me. Today we are going to learn that we are protected by God. Isn't that great news? Woohoo! For today's lesson, I will need you to go gather the following supplies. A Bible, something to fill with water. I got this big bowl here. You can use a bucket, a bowl, a bathtub, a sink, whatever you'd like. Um, aluminum foil to build a boat and some small items such as action figure Legos something that can be people in the boat I chose Legos a snack that can be broken into small pieces I have veggie straws because I can break those easily and the last thing would be some paper towels or napkins like this I have napkins right here okay ready go Welcome back. You ready to go now? You got all your supplies? In today's story, we are going to see how God protected Paul and a bunch of other sailors. But to do that, we're going to need a boat, right? Sailors are on a boat. As family members, you're going to use the aluminum foil that you got to make boats. Everyone is going to, after you make your boat, I took mine out of foil and made it like this. I did several layers. And after you make your boat, you're going to take one loose piece of foil to put in your boat that is going to be a lifeboat for later in our story. So I have my foil boat and my little foil lifeboat. Go ahead and build your boats. Ready? Go! Welcome back. Great job! It's time to set sail! But we need some sailors on these boats, so let's see. We're going to put our boat in the water. I'm going to stack some of my people in the boat. All right here. I'm going to leave a couple right there. Okay. Uh, we want to make sure that your people are waterproof also, just in case they fall overboard. So. Now we're going to push our boats along the water. Here it goes around. Doo -doo. The purpose of this trip was to take Paul and some other prisoners to jail in Italy. Paul was a prisoner for talking about Jesus. Can you even believe that? He talked about Jesus and he was arrested and became a prisoner. Guards and sailors sailed on the ship, which was supposed to make several stops along the way. Here is the first way God protected Paul. Even though he was a prisoner, he got to see some friends on one of their stops. Listen to this from the book of Acts, chapter 27, verse 3. The next day we landed at Sidon, and Julius, in kindness to Paul, allowed him to go to his friends so they might provide for his needs. Now, everyone push your boats near the edge of the water, get a person out that would be Paul, and he's visiting his friends, look at that. There's Paul talking to his friends. We are protected, God is protecting Paul. Even as a prisoner, God made sure that Paul got to see his friends and that his friends could take care of his needs. The boat, no, we gotta put Paul back on the boat now. Now, the boat kept sailing, but some strong winds came up and it made it hard to stay on course. Family members, take turns pushing your boat across the water while someone blows the boat in a different direction. Then the storm kept getting worse and worse. The boat struggled in the wind and the high waves. Everyone, make your boat or your bowl shake with water. See how the waves are coming up and the boat is very scary. If you were in that boat out in the ocean, that would be terrifying. Um, make waves. If you're just in a tub or a sink, you can use your hands in the water like this or this to make waves. But make it stormy in your boat. Oh my goodness. We are protected. God protected them with hope. He sent Paul an encouraging message of hope. Let's use our Paul figures as if Paul is talking while I read. So here's my Paul, and I'm gonna use him to talk to these people as I read from Acts 27. Here's Paul talking to them. 
After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves the damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night an angel of the God whom I belong and to whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all those who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. So here's Paul who had been arrested for talking about Jesus, and now he's preaching to them a little about telling them about the angel who visited him and that God is prom promising to keep them safe. As the boat kept struggling through the storm, the sailors realized the water was very, very shallow. They thought they'd be blown into rocks on the shore, so they let down the anchors to keep from blowing into the rocks. So now, hold your boat in place in the water like you put down an anchor. So now the boat is not going to move at all. Our anchors are down. We are protected. And God kept on protecting this boat full of sailors and prisoners. He protected them by having Paul give them wise advice. Listen to what Paul had to say in Acts 27. In an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let down the lifeboat down into the sea, pretending they were going to lower some anchors from the bow. Then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes that held the lifeboat and let it drift away. So, they're going to let the lifeboat go. Take your lifeboat now and throw it overboard. Throw it over the ship. Now, throwing away their lifeboat might not have seemed like a great idea. How are you going to get saved if the boat's going to go down? Uh, but it made the boat lighter and less likely to sink right away. Then God protected the people on the boat in another way with food. Listen to this from Acts 27, verses 33 through 37. Just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, You have been in a constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. That's two whole weeks without food. You need, to, you need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. After this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of everyone, and then broke it and began to eat. They were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. All together, there were 276 people on board. Have everyone grab a snack and break off small, tiny pieces to feed the people. And you can have a few bites yourself too if you'd like. So I'm gonna break off some little pieces to feed my people on the boat. Okay, there they go. And then if you wanna have one yourself. Mm. Yummy, yummy. Okay, let's find out what's next. Meanwhile, it was still windy and scary, but when morning came, they saw a bit of good news on shore. Listen to this from Acts 27, verse 39. When the daylight came, they did not recognize the land, but they saw a bay with a sandy beach where they decided to run the ship aground if they could. Let's make a shore next to your basin by setting out some paper towels or napkins. It might seem that God was going to protect them by giving them a safe place to land their boat, but guess what? That is not what God did. The boat hit something sharp under the water, which smashed the boat and began to break it apart. So now I want you to have everyone start ripping. I'm going to take the food out of here. And you're going to start tearing your boat, take off little pieces, Ram it into the side. Oh my gosh, the storm is so big. Crashed into a sandbar. So keep pulling the sides of it. The boat crashed. It's hard to believe that God could still protect his people on board, but he did. And so were these sailors. Let's read from Acts 27, verse 42 through 43. The soldiers planned to kill the prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming away and escaping 
but the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first to get to land. So now that the boats are falling apart, they're breaking into pieces. Oh no, we take the people and help them swim to the side over to the shore where they're safe. So even though their boat is destroyed and smashed into pieces, God provided for the people and they are safe right there. So now I have some questions that we can discuss. I'm going to read the questions and then they'll be up on the screen, but I'd like you to take time and discuss them with your family. What does our point, we are protected, mean to you? What happened to your people during this boat ride? What happened to the people that were in your boat? How can you explain God's protection even though scary and bad things happened in our story? Ready to discuss those? Go ahead and pause the video. Ready, go. What does our point, we are protected, mean to you? What happened to your people during this boat ride? What happened to the people that were in your boat? How can you explain God's protection even though scary and bad things happened in our story? Hi, welcome back. Just because God protects us doesn't mean bad things won't happen to us. Paul was still unfairly in prison and the storm still came and the boat still crashed. But we are still protected because God is with us through these unfair and scary times. We saw a lot of examples in our story of how God protected Paul and the others on the boat. And we can look for God's protection no matter what's happening in our own lives too. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for being our protector and saving us even when things seem unfair and when scary things happen to us. Help us to trust you completely when we are in those situations. And all God's amazing, wonderful, great kids said, Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to check the mail for your activity that goes along with this lesson. And if you're new to Spark and would like to be added to the mailing list, just let me know. Thanks. I miss you guys. Hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.